Um, so the other schematic we did uh, is the RS-232 control and the ADA bus schematic. So um, we can break this up, I guess, into two things, uh, two ways of thinking. Is One part is um, the VitaBox system needs to talk to these different subsystems. So before I talked about uh, the IR control, so that's one way of controlling a device. The second way of controlling a device is using uh, RS-232, and that's how we're going to be controlling the projector. We're going to have an RS-232 cable um, uh, plugged into the projector, and that will allow us to do some two-way control of the projector. And the other subsystem that we need to control is the ADA system. So the ADA system allows us to control to control it using RS-232, or we could have opted to do Ethernet or USB, but we decided to just use RS-232. And that will give us two-way communication between the ADA system. So we'll be able to get status information from all the different zones from the ADA system, as well as tell the ADA system to switch to a different source, turn on and off, and get information back from the different tuners. So the ADA itself has its own communication protocol to communicate with the various de uh, devices uh, that are part of the ADA suite. Uh, so they, they have their own proprietary plugs. So they have a uh, WH4000 here, which allows us to plug in separate subsystems into that so that they can communicate with one another. Uh, the iPod dock communicates back the same way, plugging into the WH4000. And additionally, they, uh, they added in some volume control knobs for uh, some of the offices. And those get plugged back in using CAT5 into the WH-4000. So the piece of hardware that actually uh, communicates and controls all the other subsystems is our V-Controller. So the V-Controller is a uh, Windows Server-based uh, computer, and that's what's sitting over here. And uh, that's what runs our uh, control software. And the V-Controller is going to have a bunch of RS-232 connections in the back, as well as uh, sitting on the network. Uh, and once it's on the network, we can uh, th that allows all the touch panels to communicate back to here and get their GUIs that they're going to be presenting, as well as this is the heart and brains of the whole thing. Um, so like I mentioned, this is uh, Windows Server-based, um, and that holds our automation uh, software. So when I do my programming, I'm actually um, logging into that system and designing and programming my GUIs and uh, using the automation software that we provide. But, uh, so that's, that is a, a very robust appliance again. So the last uh, schematic I did was uh, just a basic networking schematic. That This job actually involves a lot more networking, but that's on their end. I was just wanting to show what we're doing. Uh, so this schematic gives me a chance, I mean, the... Ethernet connections are pretty standard. I mean, each, each one goes back to a switch. So that's pretty standard. Really what I wanted to put on here was to um, specify any of the devices that require uh, I, static IP addresses. So that way I know what they are and I can reference them in my programming. So I, I gave uh, some static addresses to the, uh, to the V-Controller. The V-Controller is the heart of the automation in terms of controlling everything. I also added in uh, static IP for the Denon receiver, static IPs for the global cache units. I really don't want those to change because if they change, I can no longer reference them and, and control with them. Uh, and I also, for this particular project, since we're hitting the whole thing, um, I wanted the installer to know which touch panels go where, and I'll explain why they're different, even though you might think that the interface should be the same for all. Uh, they are going to be slightly modified for each uh, touch panel. So I wanted to show the serial number and what zone this touch panel was allocated for. So uh, uh, we designed a uh, pretty much a customized GUI for this customer. Um, uh, they had a kind of a, a look that they had for the whole uh, court, um, clubhouse. So we kind of designed this to kind of look and go with their theme and how they have. They kind of have a retro look for the whole thing. Uh, so we kind of emulated what they had there. Uh, and basically, uh, they wanted two levels of control. Because some of these panels are going to be accessible by the students. So they wanted to give limited control to the students uh, when they're there. So this one is currently providing or showing the uh, control capabilities for the theater. 
So they really only wanted, this panel's going to be sitting in a theater, so they really only wanted to give the students the capability to control um, the equipment that's in the theater. So this is like the limited login um, area, uh, which will pretty much uh, be always showing. Now, if one of the staff members were to come in, uh, they wanted to be able to have control over the entire uh, facility in terms of the AV control. We created an administrative login so that the, uh, the staff can go in and control all the different uh, uh, AV equipment throughout the facility. So if I click on this admin login button here, they have a, a password that they would need to punch in to give them access to uh, controlling all the different TVs in the facility. So the password for now is very simple. It's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Click enter. And now you can see uh, more things have come up on the screen as well as some extra buttons here on the side. Uh, so the first screen that gets shown are the uh, what I call video zones. So these would be zones that have TVs in them. Uh, if I click on audio only zones, these would be zones that uh, I have no TVs or only have speakers. Um, I gave them a power all off button. I think all right now all the zones are off, but if uh, one of the zones was on, I uh, could have clicked this power all off and it would shut everything down. Um, I also gave them a weather button, which would give them the current weather information. Um, and, and that would stay on whether it's admin login or uh, uh, administrative login. There's a log out button here, but I also put in a timeout. So let's say if the, uh, the staff member went in, did some control, and forgot to log out, after three minutes it'll time out and we'll go back to a limited user uh, control. So to take a look at some of the control aspects, uh, so the red buttons are giving us the status for the zone. So right now red is telling us that the zone is off. So right now the TV that's on the right side of the fitness room is off. It gives us our volume information here, the currently selected source. So I'm going to start uh, by showing how, with some of the audio only sources and how they work. So to pick a specific source, so right now it's telling me I'm selected uh, for the fitness right TV the current source is the Blu-ray player. So I'm going to change that. I'm going to click on that. And now I have a list of all my sources here. Uh, so the only, the only sources happen to be the first five. I have Cirrus Radio, XM Radio, HD Radio 1, HD Radio 2, and my iPod dock. So let's start with Cirrus Radio. So when I pick Cirrus Radio, you'll see my zone automatically turned on. The, the status went to green. And I see my source has changed to Cirrus Radio. Now if I click on Details, it gives me information, you know, uh, a pop-up that allows me to control my Cirrus radio tuner. I don't have the Cirrus uh, antenna connected, so that's why I'm getting this antenna error. But you can see that I'm getting some feedback uh, coming back from my ADA tuner. So I have some controls here to go channel up and down. I can also enter in channels directly into here. Uh, it's not going to change. Uh, well, because I don't have the antenna connected, nor is the Cirrus tuner currently authenticated. Uh, I also have a power off on button here, so I can turn the zone on and off right from here, and you can see the status changed to red. And now it'll change back to green when I turn it on. So I'm going to close out. It's a similar thing. Let's say now I change my mind and I want to go to XM Radio. I'm going to click on XM Radio. Now if I click on Details, it'll be a very similar page, just different logo. Uh, but same kind of information. The page also tells us what zone we're in and what the current source is, XM Radio, just in case somebody didn't know what that logo was. And I can go here and now let's pick HD Radio. Same kind of thing. I have uh, buttons here for switching to AM, FM, and HD Radio. I have my tuning channel changes and seeking up, down. Uh, so the next source I'm going to click on uh, and work with is the iPod Dock. So I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to click on Sources, click on iPod Dock, and I'm going to click on Details. So I've got a nice page here for control of the iPod. So I have my iPod Touch here, and um, I have my ADA Dock over there. So I'm going to dock my iPod. To learn more about this project, Simply watch the next video or visit our website, vitabox.com, or give us a call. Thanks for watching.